Have you been searching for your purpose? Have you lost hope? Well, I've got some great news for you. Hope is here. Hope is right now. And it's waiting for you. This is Tony McGee, Senior Pastor of Zion Hope Church. And I'd like to thank you for taking time to listen to this word from the Lord. My prayer is that this message will inspire and uplift you today. And I pray that this message will bring you hope. Remember hope, God's hands on people everywhere, and his hands are on you. Without further ado, please, you all show Miss Genesis Brown some love. Genesis and I came to sing for y'all
Come on, if you believe if it wasn't for his glory, if it wasn't for his grace, I want to be where you are. Come on, put your hands together.
How many of you that are here today know that God will take care of you? No, how many of you know without a shadow of a doubt that God will take care of you? Has God taken care of you? Has God taken care of you? Has God taken care of you? Has he healed you? Has he restored you? Has he delivered you? Has he set you free? Has he been a provider? Has he been a protector? If God has taken care of you, why don't you go ahead and give the Lord your best praise? Because this is the day that the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Give the Lord your best praise. The fact that you have a breath in your body is evidence that God has taken care of you. And we ought to be able to praise him. If we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out for us. And I don't know about you, but I don't want no rocks crying out for me. I want to praise him. taking care of us we thank you for watching out for us we thank you for moving mountains we thank you for opening doors we thank you for making ways we thank you for providing for us when we didn't know how we were going to make it we thank you for keeping us when we couldn't keep ourselves we want to thank you for not just taking care of us, but for taking good care of us. And Lord, we want to say thank you. We thank you for our young people and thank you for watching over them and using them in such a mighty way to be able to lead worship today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, Lord, we need to hear a word from you. Lord, I pray that Tony will be completely removed so that your Holy Spirit might speak through me. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. I pray, Lord, that your word will challenge us, that it will correct us, and that it will comfort us. I pray that your word will bring about healing and restoration. And I pray, Lord, that your word will lead us to lead better lives. I pray that we will be encouragers and not discouragers. And I pray that our relationship with you will go to another level. We love you. We adore you. We praise you. And we magnify your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. And all that agree today, man. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise one more time. What an awesome, awesome God we serve. Um, there's a word from the Lord found in Matthew chapter number 7. Matthew chapter number 7. Matthew chapter 7. First book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 7. When you have it, please say amen. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to read one verse for you on this morning. Matthew 7 and 7. Does everyone have it? Amen. And it reads, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will knock and the door will be open to you. Amen. I, I just want to preach and teach from the subject today. What do I ask God for when I pray? I want you to ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor. What do I ask God for when I pray? Ask the other neighbor. Other neighbor? What do I ask God for when I pray? 
Some of y'all ain't got no neighbors. So just say, God, God. what do I need to ask you for when I pray? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Y'all, I just wonder how many people have ever asked that question. Lord, what do I ask God for when when I pray? When, When I'm praying, what should I be asking God for? Because I know the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. I understand the Bible says that when I pray, that, that, that if I pray to God, it's going to accomplish so many things for me in my life. I know that the Bible says I need to pray without ceasing. I know that I need to pray, but what do I need to ask God for? Isn't prayer a way in which we communicate with God? And isn't prayer a a, a way in which God communicates with us? So when I communicate with with God, what do I ask him for? What should I be praying for? Because if I look at this scripture and read it, it says, Ask and it shall be given to you. And if I read this scripture... It tells me that whatever I ask for, God's going to give it to me. Period. That no matter what I ask for, God is going to give me what I ask for. So if, if, man, I wish our youth wouldn't have went back in the back. I know they go back to get their snacks and all that. But they need to hear this. If I ask God to give me a new iPhone, God going to give me a new iPhone just because I asked? I asked God to give me a new crib. Is he just going to give me a new crib because I asked? If I ask God to bless me with another car and, y'all, I need another car because, y'all, my car is messed up right now. Is he just going to give me another car? I need some money and all of us, oh, God, I just got to ask you for some loot. And all of a sudden, this loot is going to start flying off of trees and I'm going to get all this money because I asked for it. I got a test tomorrow at school. I got an algebra test. Got to deal with geometry, trigonometry, language arts. And I ain't studied all week. All I got to do, because I'm a Christian, go pray. Say, Lord, I need you to help me to pass this test. And he's going to help me to pass this test. All that's going to happen just because I asked for it, right? No, that, that's not true, y'all. And unfortunately, there's a lot of erroneous teaching dealing with prayer. And, y'all, we've been dealing with this on Wednesdays at noon and Wednesdays at 7 o'clock and and dealing with some of the hindrance from having our prayers answered and what keeps our prayers from being able to go through. So I want to encourage everybody to come back for this last prayer meeting we're having on Wednesday at noon and at 7 o'clock so we can be able to get some assurances to answer prayer. But I do want us to know that God makes promises to his children. And God always keeps his promises, but his promises are found in his word. And his promises are meant for his people who keep his principles that are found in his precepts. Okay, you missed it. That means when we read the word of God, when we read the word of God, and we apply the word of God to our lives, then we're in the right place and position to receive the blessings that God has for us because they're found in his word. But the promises of God, they are like, and you hear me say this all the time, they're like hidden treasures. And y'all, we got to go and look for them. They're like hidden treasures. We got to dig for them and we got to spend some time digging for them in the Bible because if we want to know the promises of God and what he has for us, his people, we got to know where to find them. And they're found where? In his word. When we pray, we need to realize that God is sovereign, isn't he? God is in total and complete control. Um, Is God omnipotent? That means that he's all powerful, right? So he has all power in heaven and earth in his hands. God is omniscient, isn't he? 
That means he's all-knowing, so he knows what you need, knows when he needs to give it to you and when not to give it to you because he is omniscient. God is the great creator of the world, and he's the great sustainer of all mankind. And God is able to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it by whatever means he chooses to do it by because he is the one who is in control and he is God. But just because we ask for something doesn't mean that you are going to get it. Just because we ask God to do doesn't mean that he's going to do. And it doesn't mean that he's going to do when you order him to do it. And it doesn't mean that he's going to do it in the way in which we think that it ought to be done. Well, I know you said, Pastor, you done said a whole lot of stuff in this last five minutes. But what is it then that I actually need to pray for? Because I want to make sure that I'm asking God for the right things when I pray. Because this text says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. In this sequence of scripture, Jesus is teaching his disciples important principles that they need to practice in their lives. He's teaching them about not giving up. He's teaching them that you got to ask and keep on asking. But while you're asking, you got to seek. And as you seek, then you will find. He's teaching them how to be bright lights in the midst of a dark and crazy world. He's giving them some tools and some tips that they can use to become effective disciples. He's saying, ask, seek, and find. And what he's teaching them is also beneficial for you and I in the 21st century. Ask God. When you ask, ask who? Ask God. Seek him and his word and you'll find the answer to your prayer because you're asking him, seeking him, and he'll reveal it to you. Well, what's the first thing I need to ask for? I got to ask for forgiveness of sin. We know that Adam fell in the garden, didn't he? Because he ate of that forbidden fruit. And the Bible said it was the woman that he gave to him. I'm just kidding you. Adam fell to sin. Eve fell to sin. And we know that sin, it caused the first blame game in the Bible. Adam said, God, it was this woman you gave me that caused me to sin. And it caused the separation. Sin causes separation, doesn't it? It causes people to be separated from God. Now, nothing separates us from the love of God. But when we sin, it separates us from God. It causes separation in relationships, separation between husbands and wives, between parents and children, grandchildren and grandparents, brothers and sisters. Sin causes separation. It causes issues at home, doesn't it? Has sin ever caused issues in your home? Has it ever caused you any issues at work because of sin? Has it ever caused you any issues at school because of sin? Ever caused any issues in the community? We see all this sin in the community right now, and it's causing issues in our society. And y'all, sin can even mess up some churches because sin causes separation. And the Bible teaches us that all, say all, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when we pray, we need to ask God to forgive us of our sins. We need to look again in the mirror and say, Lord, I need for you to forgive me of the sin problem that I have inside of me. Because when I look at sin, it's spelled S-I-N. And in the middle of the S and the N is a? Is an eye, so I need to deal with the sin problem that's inside of me, whatever the sin is. Y'all, we have to admit that all of us have a sin problem, and we need God to forgive us of our sins. First John 1 and 8 says, if we claim 
to be without sin. And he's writing to believers. We deceive ourselves and the truth is ain't in you. That was my translation. If you don't think you have a sin problem, then the Bible says you're deceiving yourself. If you can look at other people and determine in your mind that they have a sin problem, but Tony McGee can never look at the sin problem that I have and acknowledge my own sin, then I'm deceiving myself. That means I'm misleading myself and I'm lying to myself. Whether my sin is a sin of omission, where I don't do something, I just, I just omit to do it. You know, like being lazy. You just omit to do stuff because you're lazy. You don't do your chores. You don't take out the trash. You don't do your homework. You just omit it. Don't pay your bills on time. Just omit it. Don't go to work on time. Don't make it to school on time. You just, oh, you just didn't do it. Or what about the sins of commission where you actually committed the sin? You did it. Yes, I did it. I did. What is it? Don't worry about it, but it is it. <laughs> worry about your it. I worry about my it. Then everything is all right. Sin of commission. Then sometimes it's our sin of what? Disposition. And I know a lot of times we think about when your attitude is jacked up and you mean evil and hard to get along with. That ain't the only sin of disposition. Sometimes it can be you just retreating and not talking to somebody. A lack of communication. Um, your disposition is not right. Where I may always be negative and always being a pessimist and not an optimist. And always thinking that the glass is half empty and that it's never half full. And I'm always waiting on the next bad thing to happen. Because I'm negative Nancy. Or trouble sometimes. And never acknowledge the sin that I'm dealing with. But once we acknowledge that we have a sin problem, whatever the sin may be, the good news that John says that if we choose to confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins. And then he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So you know what that means, y'all? That means when we pray, what do I need to ask God for? I need to ask God to forgive me of my sins. I need to ask God to forgive me for my mistakes. God, look, I know I'm messed up. I'm toe up from the flow up. And I need for you to forgive me. Lord, forgive me for the things that I did wrong. Forgive me for my transgressions. Forgive me for my lapses in judgment. Forgive me for the times that I've led myself astray. God, forgive me for the times when I didn't acknowledge you, when I didn't appreciate you, when I took you for granted. Lord, forgive me of my sins. And when you pray for God to forgive you, he's faithful and just that he will forgive you for whatever sin you've committed, then he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you believe Jesus is the son of God and he died on the cross for your sins, you will be saved and you can be cleansed. You can be purified. You can get a new lease on life if you choose to believe in him. The Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 4 and 15, for we don't have a high priest who's not able to sympathize with our weakness but we have one who was tempted in every way just as you are, yet without sin. Then let us approach him through the throne of grace with confidence so that we might receive mercy and grace to help us during our time of need. You know what that means? That means this shortcut. Jesus knows what you're going through. He knows the sin issues you're dealing with. He was tempted just like you were tempted. He was tempted just like I was tempted. Yet he never sinned, but he made intercession for us because he loved us so much that he said, I'm not going to let you die to your sin. I'm going to intercede. And when sin came in, I stepped in so I could take the penalty and sin away. So that this broken relationship can now be restored. So when we pray, y'all, we got to ask God for forgiveness of whose sin? My sin. My sin. And when I pray, when you pray, we got to ask God to deliver us from temptation. When Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he said, lead us not into, but deliver us from the, from the evil one. How many of y'all know temptation can come in different ways? Uh, it can come in different ways, can't it? 
Uh, we can be tempted to do things that we shouldn't do. Um, we can be tempted to say some things that mama didn't teach me. We can be tempted to go some places. Yes, right. That I shouldn't go. Um, temptation can cause us and, and entice us to react impulsively without even thinking. It can cause us to, to lose control and, and to blow off some steam. It can cause us to lose control and charge up bank account, charge up charge cards because we spend excessively because of the temptation. It can cause us to eat a whole bunch of nice cupcakes that we had at a birthday party on Friday. Um, it can cause us to drink that coffee that's up the street that tastes good. Um, temptation can appeal to our different appetites, can't it? It can. To our secret desires. That's what temptation can do to, to any of us. It can tempt us. Jesus was tempted by Satan. Y'all know that? Jesus was tempted. So if Jesus was tempted, what makes us think that you and I wouldn't be tempted as well? Satan is going to try to tempt you with things that appeal to your desires or things that you have difficulty controlling. That's how Satan's going to tempt you. That's how he's going to tempt me with things that we have trouble controlling or desires that are running unchecked. He's going to tempt you with things that look good to you, things that smell good, things that glisters, glistens and glamour and all of that. I knew I'd get, see, that's my amen corner right there. You keep giving amens. He will tempt us to act in ways that we normally don't act. He'll tempt us by allowing things to get under our skin, uh, getting us mad and upset. He'll tempt us in different ways. And oftentimes, he's going to tempt you by the ones that are closest to you. So when we pray, we need to pray to ask God to forgive us for our sins. But we also got to ask him, Lord, help me to deliver me from the temptation that I face in this world every single day. Facebook temptation, Twitter temptation, CNN temptation, MSNBC temptation. Because there's so much craziness in the world, you're going to turn on something and get mad, upset, can't even watch the news no more. Because all you see is bad news. Can't go to the store. Somebody got something to say. Sorry, I'm going to get there. Some of y'all being tempted right now. I'm looking at you, tempted to fall asleep. <laughs> Eyes getting all heavy. I know y'all had a late night last night. That's all right. Y'all, some of y'all going to be tempted before you even leave the parking lot. Somebody's going to pull out of the parking space and not see you and almost hit you, and you're going to be tempted to say something to them. Okay, not in the church parking lot. <laughs> Once you make it out on 46th Street, somebody's going to come speeding by, and you're going to be tempted to say something to them. Or you're going to go get something to eat, and they're going to take too long while you're getting something to eat, and you're going to be mad because you know at 2 o'clock you got somewhere to be, and you know pastor's going to be done preaching at 12.15 today. <laughs> so you want to get home. You're going to be tempted by your grandchildren. They're going to say something to get on your last nerve today. They're going to do something. Your children gonna get, they gonna work your nerves and you're gonna be tempted. You're gonna say, look, you got, got this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be funny. But I want you to know, y'all, that we gotta pray that we get delivered from temptation. But then we also gotta ask the Lord to deliver us while we're in temptation. Because sometimes we've not been delivered from, and I'm like, oh Lord, I'm in it. <laughs> and I need you to deliver me while I'm in it. Lord, I'm in the crack house. Deliver me. I'm in the liquor store. Deliver me. I'm in a position I should not be in. Lord, deliver me right now. And when you pray for God to deliver you from temptation, but you pray for him to deliver you while you're in temptation, you go back to his word where God said there's no temptation that sees you. He said what is common to man that God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, God will pray. 
provide a way out that you can stand up while you're in it. That means that you can be delivered from temptation. God will not let you be tempted above what you can handle. God will give you, God will give you, he will give you, 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 and you everything that you need so that you can stand up while you're facing temptation. Temptation can tempt you, but it sure enough can't defeat you because when you pray, God will give you everything that you need to deal with any temptation that comes your way. Is there anybody in here who's been delivered from temptation? Anybody in here that's been delivered while you was in temptation? If you've been delivered from temptation or you've been delivered while you were in temptation, go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Today is the day for you to be delivered. Today is the day for you to be able to be set free. Today is the day that you can be delivered from temptation. And even while you're in temptation, you can be delivered. So what do I need to pray for? I need to ask God to forgive me of my sin. I need to ask God to deliver me from my temptation or deliver me while I'm in my temptation. But then, y'all, I got to pray that the Lord will lead me in the right way. I got to pray that he will lead me in the right way. Because if it's left up to Tony McGee, y'all, there's sometimes that I don't know where I may lead myself. Sin and temptation can take you down a deep, dark, and dismal path that can lead you to destruction. You know, the anonymous writer said that sin will take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you're willing to pay. That's what sin will do. So I need God to lead me in the right way. The Bible teaches us the steps of a good man or the steps of a good woman are ordered by who? So I need, I don't know about you, but I need the Lord to order my steps. I don't want him just to show me where to go. Because I know his word is a lever to my feet and a light into my pathway. But I need him to order my steps. I need it. I, the Lord, order my steps. Now. Right now. I need you to lead me. I need for you to give me a series of, of or a sequence of steps that I need to follow. And I need you to make it as simple as one, two, three. Because sometimes I go one, two, ten. And I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Order my steps. Lord, I need you to arrange them for me. Because sometimes my one is here and my two is over there. But it needs to be there. So I need you to arrange them, lay them out for me, and coordinate them for me. Teach me the right way. Educate me the right way. Order my steps and train me because I'm sick and tired of going to the wrong places. I'm tired of always taking the scenic route. I'm tired of always doing that, taking the scenic route. Yeah, at times it can be beautiful. But y'all, it take you a long time to get home. Take you a long time to, to get home going the scenic route. And, and, and see, I'm going the scenic route with this earpiece right now. And it's going a lot of different places. But y'all, I'm tired of all these detours because I do what I want to do. I'm tired of all these bypasses because I'm doing what I want to do. I'm tired of these self-inflicted accidents that continue to happen because, Lord, I'm not following you, but I'm following myself. I'm tired of going the wrong way down a one-way street. And, Lord, I'm asking you to teach me to order my steps right now. So if I want to be able to be a better person, if I want to be a better husband, if I want to be a better father, if I want to be a better pastor, if I want to be a better son, I need you, Lord, to order my steps. And I can't wait for you to do it tomorrow. I need for you to do it right now because I want to be in the middle of your will so that your will is done in my life. So order my steps. So what do I need to ask God for when I pray? Forgive me of what? My sins. Deliver me from, from temptation and deliver me while I'm in my temptation. 
But Lord, now I need you to order my, my steps. And while I'm following your direction, Lord, as you're ordering my steps, I need to pray for, and this is it and I'm done for today. I need, Lord, for you to give me strength. Because when we're dealing with sin that's taking place within, and when we're dealing with temptation and needing to be delivered from temptation or being delivered while we're in temptation, and we're trying to now follow the steps that God is trying to take us. Y'all, when we're doing all of this, we can get tired. We can get weak. And we can get weary. And those are the times that we got to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I need your strength. Because life is hard. Life is difficult. And in life, we're going to have some pain and some problems. And y'all, they're going to be persistent. There's going to be times when it seems like the pain never goes away. The hurt never goes away. The sting never goes away. Life is complex and it's full of complex problems and complex issues. And all of us, all of us have to deal with them. And if we're going to be able to make it in life, we're going to have to be able to hold on to the Lord for the source of our strength. And the psalmist teaches us that the Lord, that he's my, my refuge. And, and the Lord, he's my, my strength. And he's an ever-present help while I'm dealing with this trouble. And what that means to me is that, God, you're going to be my strength. And I need you to be my strength. When I have no more strength, this is the time I need for the Lord to be my strength. When I have no more gas in my tank, when, the, when I'm on E, and I can't even make it to the gas station. Lord, this is the time I need you to revive me, to refresh me, and to refuel me so that I can be able to continue on to do what you have for me to do. And then we got to trust his word. I have no more strength. So that's when we got to seek him. Because the Bible says that the Lord is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so that means I have no more gas that means I have no more energy I have no more strength I have no more tears I have no more nothing I can do nothing that's the time that I got to seek God diligently and I got to seek him again and again and again and again and again because when I have no more strength I need to seek the Lord when I have no more power I have to seek God when there's nothing left on the inside of me all I can do is seek God and when we seek God how many of you know that God will give you the strength that you need so that you can be able to make it no matter what you're going through in your life you just need to tell yourself I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me now I cannot do all things with the limited strength that I have. However, when I lean and I depend on Jesus, I can do some things that I never thought I could do. When I lean and depend on Jesus, I can love folks while they hating on me. When I lean and depend on Jesus and he's my strength, I can forgive folks while they fussing at me. When I lean and depend on Jesus, I can get up when somebody's knocking me down. I can take a licking but keep on ticking. When I lean and depend on Jesus, so today, I want you to know that you can make it. 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 Don't you give up. Don't you give in. Don't you give out. Because you can make it. God will be your strength. You ain't got to fear because God is with you. Don't be dismayed because God is with you. Don't be discouraged because God is with you. Don't be disheartened because God is with you. Don't be intimidated, God is with you. Don't you be stressed, depressed, or obsessed because God is with you and not only is he with you, he'll strengthen you when you need it. Not only will he strengthen you, but he will keep you. 
when everyone else has turned their backs. He will hold you when everybody else has let go. He will wrap his arms around you and say, you are my child. You are fearfully and wonderfully. And I'll never leave you, nor forsake you, nor put more on you than you're able to handle. I'm with you, my child, because I love you. No matter what you face, I'm with you. No matter what you go through, I'm with you. No disease can separate you from me. No hate can separate you from me. No community can separate you from me because I'm with you. And I'm going to strengthen you. And I'll do it right now. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on to his hand. Don't you let go of God, because he won't let go of you. You keep fighting. You keep praying. You keep fasting. You keep serving. You keep walking. You keep stepping. And don't you give up. Because God is with you. Keep walking in your purpose. Keep walking in your purpose. Keep walking in your purpose. Step into your deliverance. Temptation can tempt you, but it doesn't have to defeat you. Because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And today, is setting you free. He's setting you free. Won't you let him into your life? Lord, what do I pray for? That you forgive me of my sin. Because I know I messed up. Forgive me. Lord, I pray that you deliver me from temptation. And I pray that you deliver me while I'm in temptation. I'm praying right now that you order my steps. Show me where I need to go. Teach me, train me, develop me in the way you want me to be. And Lord, give me strength because I have no more. And all I can do is give it over to you. When you cast your cares upon him, you remove the weight off of you and you give it to him. And then he gives you the strength to stand after you've already been knocked down. So today, this invitation is extended to you. Today's the day for you to be delivered. Today's the day for you to be set free. Today is the day for you to get your breakthrough if you turn your life over to Him. Do you want a church that's exciting? Do you want a church that's relevant? Do you want a church that's filled with love? Come to the hope so you can learn and grow. I would like to invite you and your entire family to worship with us at Zion Hope Church. We're located at 5950 East 46th Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. That's at 46 in Arlington, right behind the Shell gas station. Hope is here. Hope is right now. And there's hope for you. Connect with us on the web at zionhopechurch.org or on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram for social media. We would love to see you at The Hope.